Wonderful to be here. It's a little bit cooler, which is nice. We've got those extremes, haven't we? Too hot to go outside, then it's raining to go outside. But the good thing is, we're inside together this morning to worship God. And what a beautiful thing that is. Welcome. If you're visiting with us, whether here in person or online, we welcome you today. Thank you for taking the time to come and be with us. And uh, we trust, uh, for those of you that are visiting, uh, that you will experience the warmth of our church and also uh, the presence of God who is amongst us uh, this morning. And so uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of our worship service. Um, I guess it's very, very repetitive, but particularly for guests, um, I just want to uh, acknowledge the, um, our COVID safety officer who's sitting out there with his vest on. Uh, uh, we are still not able to be uh, free of the mask, so restrictions are lifting, aren't they? I guess some of us are watching it every day, doing all that reading. You ever tried to read that government website there? It's very challenging. But um, at this point in time, we can be together, which I think is the most important thing. Um, but we are wearing our masks and we're not able to sing uh, as yet. I know some of you said you're humming along with your mask on. Um, that's fine, I'm sure. But uh, that's what it'll be for now. Of course, those on stage are going to be singing and leading us. And I want to encourage you, even though we can't sing, uh, let's do the best we can to focus our attention uh, toward Jesus and uh, let the orientation of our eyes and our thoughts, uh, our mind be toward him as he is focused on us this morning as well and rejoicing over us. So welcome. Uh, I'll pray and then um, our music team will lead us in some songs. Father, we thank you for another day. First day of the week, Sunday, a beautiful day to start the week by being together uh, as a family of faith. And uh, we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it lightly, um, but we acknowledge your presence with us. And we thank you for that. And we pray that the worship that you receive today will be pleasing to you. Um, we pray that you will delight over us, as your word says we're singing, and rejoice over us as we rejoice uh, in your presence. And so bless this meeting, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you very much, team. Appreciate that.
Oh, well, thanks everyone. And uh, again, on behalf of uh, the team here at MCC, it's great that you can join with us this morning as, uh, as we join together. So uh, a couple of welcomes as well uh, to, to Daniel. Daniel's going to be uh, speaking a little bit later on at our, our worship team meeting that we're going to have this afternoon, but also going to present for us up the front here. I'll let Jeremy do a bit more of an introduction uh, a little bit later on, but it's uh, great that you can join with us this morning. Daniel and, uh, and James Follin, he'll be uh, speaking with us this morning as well. So thank you, James, for bringing the message for us soon. Um, the bulletin you would have got uh, via email this week, but if you're not on that mailing list or would like to be or would like to grab access to it, you can get the bulletin off our website um, and there's a way to sign up on the website to be able to get it or come and see one of us and we'll get you uh, onto that mailing list as well. But that's how we're getting our news out to you at the moment, uh, via the bulletin on the website. So uh, make sure you get in touch that way if you can. Um, this is the new normal, I think. You know, a year ago, things were a little bit different, but this seems to be the new normal. So again, we're trying to do as best as we can with, uh, with the rules that surround us. Uh, and it was great that some of us could get together Wednesday a week ago to sort of understand how we're gonna get back into ministry this year and things like that during the week. So again, stay tuned in the bulletin to be able to go through that uh, and understand what activities you can get involved in. And it's great to see this week, the kids are back. Uh, so we'll have our kids force going on this morning. I'll let you out in a minute. Um, but it's great that they can join with us the, this morning. Uh, and also the small groups during the week are getting back into the swing of things as well. So if you'd like to get uh, involved in something like that, uh, please get in touch with us and we'll help direct you to sort of a group that uh, you might be able to join during the week as well. Um, Friday night, more stuff for the kids. So we've got Kidscape starting, I think, at 5.30. Um, is that right? Good. So 5.30, we've got Kidscape, and then uh, an hour later, we've got the... the Older kids, uh, sort of from year six onwards, uh, they're meeting as youth downstairs as well. So again, if you're in those age groups, uh, get a hold of one of the youth leaders or come and see myself and we'll uh, help get some details to you as well. So lots going on in that regard. A um, couple of things in today's meeting. So after our church service, we need to have a very quick, short uh, church meeting under our procedures. We need to uh, nom uh, bring any nominations forward for our ministry team and we need to do that eight weeks prior to our annual meeting so we're going to do that just for a couple of minutes after today's service um, so just so you understand that's happening uh, and then at midday the worship uh, team or anyone involved with that creative team the guys that you see up the front in planning in the tech team up the back uh, we're going to have a gathering for a couple of hours this afternoon as well so looking forward to doing that today too um, there's still a number of roles to play in MCC in, uh, in rosters, like fixing up the grounds, doing flowers. Uh, if, if you can help out any, any of those areas or, or would like to take on an extra task, um, come and see myself, Jeremy, or, or Kim over here, uh, and we'll help, uh, again, direct you to something that um, there's, there's always work to be done. So we'd love some more helpers if you can do that for us. I think that's all my notes that I had. Um, what we would usually do at this time in the past, we would have taken up our offering, but uh, again, we're not going to pass a physical plate around anymore. There is a physical bucket in the corridor there, uh, just near the front door, if you'd like to contribute to that, or thank you to those that are contributing online as well at the moment. So I'm just going to pray for that, and then we'll send our kids out to Kids Force this morning. So would you pray with me? Father God, I just thank you that we can uh, join together this morning uh, in your house. Father, we thank you uh, that we can also bring our offerings to you uh, via the online methods and in the bucket at the front there, Lord. I would ask that you bless this money, Lord. I ask that you use it uh, to further the growth of your kingdom and further the spread of the gospel through this church and through the others that we support as well with this, Lord. Father, I pray for the kids now as they go out uh, to their kids' force uh, and we look forward to seeing them back a little bit later on, Lord. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. So kids, follow your leaders. If you're unsure, um, there's a couple of leaders here putting their hands up, bronze waving, Fred Rika's in the bright yellow, Elisa's there, Fitzy's there, so grab hold of them. The rest of us can have a quick chat for a minute or two just while they all head out, but um, Jeremy will come and take my place in a second. Wonderful. Well, again, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Two of the disciplines that are part of our worship service uh, each week is uh, prayer and public prayer and um, 
also the public reading of the scriptures, uh, two disciplines that um, are important to us as a church, and uh, I'm going to lead you in both of those now. Um, and so why don't you join me as we pray? Father, we thank you this morning for your presence amongst us. Uh, we do not gather on our own. We don't gather without you. You are amongst us. And uh, we thank you for your presence. Uh, this is what separates us from any other gathering that there might be um, taking place in the Shire this morning. Um, we don't gather just amongst ourselves, uh, but we gather with you. And so we thank you for your presence. And I pray that you will make yourself known, that you will reveal yourself to us through song, through scripture, through testimony, through the conversations that we have with each other. Lord, we acknowledge your presence and we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, at this time as we uh, gather, uh, as term one starts, uh, many of uh, our children, young, are starting school for the first time. And so we pray, Lord, that as they begin that new adventure of school, that you will be with them. Uh, whether they're in a Christian school or a public school, uh, we pray that you will be with them encourage them we we believe that their years of learning this next 12 year of learning will be beneficial to them they'll learn uh, they'll be educated they'll learn people skills they'll lean they'll lean team skills and interaction with other kids and and so we thank you we thank you for the teachers that we have in our church we pray as they engage in another year of education that you will be with them your blessing your hand uh, will be upon them help them to be able to speak into the lives of children um, guiding them in their education we thank you for all the ministries that are starting up in our church uh, too many to name right now but we thank you lord that we have the opportunity to not only engage ourselves in the various ministries of our church but open up our doors open them wide fling wide the doors and the windows of our building and invite our community to engage with us and to enjoy the various ministries and be blessed, be challenged, and maybe for those who don't know you, find you in those ministries as well, whether it's small group, play group, uh, embrace, wise, all the various ministries, Lord. We're believing this year, as they start again, that there will be health and strength and growth in our ministries. At this time, we think of those that are needing your healing touch, your presence amongst us, and your healing touch amongst us. I think of everybody, Lord, again, too many to name, but Lord, we pray, we unite our faith together this morning to believe and to pray for your healing touch. Lord, we believe, as your word says, that healing is the children's bread. And so we ask for that this morning. We ask for your healing touch, made available to us through the death, burial, and resurrection of your son, Jesus. And so we look to the blood, we look to that agent that brings healing. And we ask for that physical healing, mental healing, uh, restoration, recovery. Lord, we pray that you will be merciful to us. We ask you for your mercy and your grace. Minister your healing touch. Those that are just needing the comfort and the peace of the Holy Spirit at this time. Those that are preparing for weddings, those that are preparing for uh, new journeys of faith. Lord, we pray your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, and we ask for our senior pastor, Heath, and his family, Lord, that you will continue to restore him in health, invigorate him. Lord, we look forward to his return, and we pray, Lord, that you will and continue to be speaking to him and his family as they prepare themselves for, I guess, a, a re-entry after six months into the life of our church. So all these things we commit to you uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Um, I want to introduce to you this morning uh, Dr. Or Reverend Dr. Daniel Thornton. Uh, Daniel and his wife, Chris, uh, sitting with my wife there, have been friends of ours for probably uh, about 25 years. I remember meeting them many, many years ago and instantly we connected and uh, have worked together have done ministry and leadership together. Daniel currently is the program director for the Master of Leadership program at Alpha Crucis College, the college that I studied at. Um, he there at the college is also the head of worship there and chairs several committees there. Um, his experience has uh, crossed the seas, uh, 
I'm not sure how you word it correctly, Daniel, but I know you've done presentations or been involved in Broadway there and directed and written uh, starred, I guess would be the right word to use there in many productions uh, outside of the church, also in the church space as well. Uh, we've actually been in the same church a couple of times where Daniel's been the music and creative director. And, um, and so I'm introducing you to him this morning. Daniel's going to come, if you want to come, Dan, and minister to us in song. I've also asked Daniel uh, to be with us in our creative meeting after this service as we journey together as a creative team. Uh, well, I'm including myself in that, but uh, uh, we, we're journeying together as we are in all of the areas of ministry in our church, looking at renewal, joining Jesus in the renewal of all things. And so we're looking at, we're starting this year by looking at what does renewal look like in this creative space, the music and the worship and the song and all of that. And uh, so Daniel's with us today to share uh, some thoughts around that over lunch. And so thank you, Daniel and Chris for coming. And uh, please minister to us in song. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much for inviting us and having us today. It's wonderful to be with you. I was thinking about, even though I've rewritten some of the words of this uh, old hymn, 150 years ago it was written and... Uh, I think the words are perhaps now more relevant than they've ever been because not all is well with our world, but we as Christians can still say it is well with our soul. Every day, oh, 
whatever comes my way, it is well with my soul. You have taught me to say each and every sound of that piano <laughs> and uh, thank you Daniel um, a very appropriate song we appreciate that I trust that ministered to you wherever you are right now it's a wonderful declaration that isn't it it is well with my soul in the midst of challenge I think uh, James the writer said I pray your soul prospers and uh, thank you Dan I'm going to read the public scriptures or read them publicly. Uh, it is the passage that James is going to preach from. So if you have your Bible, you might like to turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. And we're reading verses 14 through to 30. Uh, it may appear on the screen as well. Uh, Matthew chapter 25 and reading from verse 14. The parable uh, of the bags of gold. Um, is the uh, title that uh, the version I'm reading from gives us. So Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 14. Again, so this is another story, another parable, along this theme of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven. Again, it will be like, that is the kingdom of heaven, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. To another, two bags. And to another, one bag. Each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. 
I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside, into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May God bless the reading of the scripture to us. And we now wait with interest to see what James is going to share with us from this scripture. Welcome, James. Great to have you, buddy. on that I'm getting used to having a microphone on like this so that's working well it sounds like what do you want written on your tombstone have you ever considered the inscription more importantly at the end of your life what do you want God to say to you personally at the end of my life, I eagerly anticipate and desire the day where God says to me and commends me as well done, good and faithful servant. So now before we get in to the sermon today, let us pray. Dear Lord, uh, as we get into the teaching of the parable, please give us ears to hear and hearts to understand your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is James Follant, and I have the privilege and honour of handling the word of God today as we look through this parable in the book of Matthew, chapter 25. And if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to get a Bible out or your phones out and look up Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. It's the parable of the bags of golds, or if you had an older version uh, of the NIV, it may be referred to as the parable of the talents. And as we explore today's passage, we'll be exploring what it means about being faithful as we wait for Jesus' return. I'm going to go through this passage looking at three main points. What does it mean to wait for Jesus? Are you ready for Jesus' return, and how do we wait for Jesus faithfully? If you'd like to take notes, I'll repeat those three points again. What does it mean for, to wait for Jesus? Are you ready for Jesus' return, and how do we wait for Jesus faithfully? And as we look at the parable today, 
I want to recognize we're going to be start thinking about how we use our time and our money. This is because Jesus shares this parable to teach us about what it looks like to faithfully wait for Jesus' return. And to help unpack that, let's look at the context around where this parable sits in the book of Matthew. And why did Jesus teach in parables to begin with? Well, he has that conversation with his disciples, um, reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 13. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Which is just a really interesting verse. But the contextual point that I want to draw from that is that Christ teaches in parables to re- reveal truth and to tr- conceal truth. And that's also part of the reason that I prayed to open this, that we would have ears to hear and hearts to understand. I'm looking at some of the parables around the parables of the bag of gold. We see the parable four is a parable about the ten virgins. virgins before we get in to the again at the start. So reading from Matthew 25, verse 1. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. So the parable of the bags of gold comes after that, and when we read the word again, we can be thinking about it in the context of it's a teaching about the kingdom of heaven. And furthermore, as we come down through to midway in the parable, we hear about giving of the account. And the parable after, or the story after, is when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. So the Son of Man being another name for Jesus. So we see that this is about the return of Jesus, which helps set the scene. And to really kind of condense that and summarize that really quickly, the parable of the bags of gold comes in the context of believers must always be prepared for Christ's return whenever it may occur. And Matthew 24, 37 to 44 describes how it will catch many by surprise. So that's talking about how he will come like a thief in the night. And then Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 51, warns disciples not to assume Christ will stay away longer than he actually does. And then Matthew 25, 1 to 13, warns them against assuming he will return more quickly than he actually will. And then we get into Matthew 25, 14 to 30, that teaches proper behavior, however long the interval of Christ's return may be, uh, with our faithful stewardship of every resource that we have been entrusted with. So that brings me to point one. What does it mean to wait for Jesus? So let me read from verse 14. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one with two bags gained two more. But the man who had received one bag, went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. What does it mean to wait for Jesus? Let us start by examining some of the imagery that's in the parable. A master is going on the journey and giving his servants responsibility in a similar way to how Jesus has entrusted us, you, you and me, with an amount of responsibility until his return? Well, how much responsibility? How much was a bag of gold? How much is a talent? Well, reading into it, talent was something in the Greek of talentos 
from the reading I did in preparation, and that was a measure that was equivalent to about 6,000 denarii, and a denarii was equivalent to a day's wages. So to summarise that after doing the math, it means we can imagine a bag of gold is almost equivalent to somebody's life savings. Imagine 20 years of worth of work given to you in a single bag of gold. It means that we think, when we think about the servant that was given five bags, it's like being entrusted with 100 years worth of wages. That's a lot of money. Imagine someone coming up to you and giving you five people's superannuation funds to look after. That would be a big responsibility. What would you do with it? How would you look after that? It means that as we wait for Jesus, we have a responsibility to be faithful with what he has given to us. Furthermore, the meaning of waiting for Jesus can be explored through each servant being given different things. They're all given it according to their ability. And at this point, I want to unpack that further. It's not necessarily about what you've been given and comparing it to someone else around you. The purpose of this is to communicate that you need to be faithful with whatever God has given to you. It's individual. It's about being faithful with what Jesus has entrusted you. There's no use comparing the ability that I've been given to someone else, looking over the fence to see if the grass is greener on the other side. In fact, it would be dangerous as it makes space for envy to creep into our lives and into our hearts. A quote I once heard about comparison was, that comparison is a thief of joy, which is often attributed to President Theodore Roosevelt. So if you're looking over your shoulder, comparing yourself to someone else next to you, you're probably coming at it from the wrong perspective, especially as we consider the abilities God has given each of us within the body, the diversity of the body of Christ. So therefore, when we read this verse in verse 15, we need to be focused on how the bags of gold have been given for the purpose of them being faithful with what the master has entrusted to them. The faithfulness is focused on looking after the bags of gold we are getting. And our responsibility to be faithful is the key part of what it means to wait for Jesus through being faithful with what we have been given. You're starting to see the repetition of the faithfulness in that. And that brings me to point number two. Are you ready for Jesus' return? We read about this in verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. What does it mean? Well, settling accounts is financial terminology. It's like reconciling your bank account if you have a business. But in this case, in this parable, each of the servants is giving an explanation for looking after what the master had given them with those bags of gold. In the past week, myself and my wife Sarah had the privilege of looking after the Pring household being entrusted with house sitting for them as they enjoyed a holiday. They gave us the keys. They trusted us to look after one dog, two turtles, and a variety of fish, as well as the house. So I still need to give Craig and Kayleen the keys back. Um, but in giving an account, we fed the dog, we fed the turtles, we fed the fish. However, I didn't count how many fish there were, so I don't know if there's more or less with the turtles. And also something happened at dinner one night with sitting on one of the chairs. So, however, in this illustration, in this analogy, Sarah and I knew when Craig and Kayleen were coming back. We knew what time they were coming so we could be prepared and have the house tidy and clean and in order. And that is something we don't necessarily know when we think about Jesus' return, but we still need to be ready to give an account. And we can also consider settling accounts in the overall biblical narrative of the Bible. 
and we're going to just hopscotch through some really big things right now. Creation. God created everything and gave it to Adam and Eve to look after. And then the fall happened, and we rebelled against God, and we weren't looking after that properly. And then God chooses Israel, and he promised to bring salvation to the nations through them. And then we have Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection for the purpose of saving us from our sin and restoring us in our relationship to God. And all this comes before an unknown time and hour when Jesus will return and there will be a day of judgment. And at some point in the future, there will be a day of judgment where an account needs to be given for our lives. So I ask again, are you ready for Jesus' return? If you are not sure if your relationship with God has been restored, I would like to invite you to talk to Jeremy or I after the end of the service. However, I'm hoping you're ready for Jesus' return and you are confident that you are saved by grace through faith because this parable is not about being saved because of the things we do. As we talk about giving in an account, nothing you will do is enough to overshadow Christ's sacrifice in his death and resurrection on the cross. So this parable is not about salvation by works. The parable is about being faithful with what we given have been given as we wait for Jesus' return. This brings me to point three. How do you wait faithfully for Jesus? We read about the master's response in verses 20 to 30. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you have entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you have entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping of gnashing of teeth. Now this parable is setting up a contrast between two faithful servants to the one wicked and lazy servant. We see the faithful servants go off and put, off, put their money to work. They are productive and they bring back a profit ready for the master's return. Whereas the wicked and lazy servant buries the money in the ground. And now as we think about being faithful with what we have, I just want to acknowledge some of the things that are in the text that as part of the text we see that the faithful servants get to rejoice in the master's happiness and then the wicked and lazy servant is cast out to a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth that connotes imagery that we often see in other places in the Bible of hell. But I'm not going to be dealing and unpacking that today. That could be its own sermon, but it is there in the text, so I want to acknowledge it, but I want to be focusing in on that it's about being faithful as I share through and about this parable today. It's about being faithful with what we do with Jesus' as return. So we're thinking about the faithfulness we can do now compared to the future outcome 
of what will happen after that judgment day, after that giving of account. So imagine what it would have been like for those two faithful servants to go and put their money to work in the context of ancient Israel. As far as I am aware, I don't believe that Israel had an ASX, an Australian stock exchange, to go off and invest their money that they've been entrusted into a share market. I don't believe that in Israel's history they had digital currency, something like Bitcoin, to go and buy to put their money to work. Um, Putting the money to work would actually require something we might be more familiar with as an entrepreneurial ability, something like business acumen or business know-how with how they put their money to work. Imagine going out, purchasing a property, going out, purchasing a field ready for a harvest, purchasing a local business like a bakery, investing in different goods to sell them at a profit with the master's money as that initial investment. So what does that look like as we think about that for us? Well, if we desire to end our life and be recognized as a good and faithful servant, how do we apply this to where we are today? Well, being faithful with our money is also connected with being faithful with our time. Time is money is a quote that is often attributed to Benjamin Franklin, and the way that we use our time is something we often use to earn money. Think about casual wages. An amount of money is paid for every hour of work given. So when you have been faithful with our time, we can also have the opportunity to be faithful with our money and vice versa. Because in today's modern society, those two things are quite strongly connected. On the other hand, for those who are fans of Marvel, you might remember Tony Stark once said, no amount of money can ever buy a second of time. Because once time has passed, we're never going to get it back. So in the extreme example of spending all your time to make as much money as possible, bull, be as productive as possible, at the exclusion of things like rest, which Lee talked about in the sermon last week, being invited into rest with God, as well as at the exclusion of things like relationships with family, of friends, as well as other important relationships in your life, it would be detrimental and unwise. So this parable means we need to consider what it means to faithfully look after the time, what it means to faithfully look after the time and the money God has given to us. The parable is teaching that we need to be faithful, and it's not a command to work, 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 about being as productive as possible and burning yourself out in the process. It's something where you have to use wisdom in the balance of what you have been entrusted with. Personally, I often like to pray through Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, for your we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which prepared in advance for us to do. So my prayer for that usually looks like, dear God, please show me what those good works are, and dear God, please help me to do them as I think about how I personally can be faithful with what God has given to me. And as we think about how we can be faithful and how you can be faithful with what Jesus has given to you, let me propose some really concrete areas in your life that you may need to consider and do something about as we faithfully use our time and money. And I'm going to phrase these as questions because I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not qualified to give you financial advice, but you can go and ask someone else these questions or the Holy Spirit may be convicting you in one way or another. Do you spend more than you earn? Because there are over 13 million credit cards in Australia and it takes an average of six and a half months to pay off a credit card. Do you have a superannuation fund? Do you have more than one superannuation fund? Could you talk to a financial advisor about consolidating those superannuation funds? Have you ever considered the administrative cost 
that could be eating into the balance and taking advantage of compound interest. Have you ever considered how you use your money can be a faithful tool that you can steward for the benefit of the kingdom of God when we wait for Jesus' return? And then we come to generosity. Is there any ways you think you can give generously to the kingdom of God? And there are other things, there may be other things about money in your life that you're being prompted to faithfully put to work after hearing the parable today. And they are things that I'd encourage you to think about sharing with someone you trust and talking about further in response to the truth of this parable. But I also want to let you consider how we can faithfully use our time. We can use our time in service of others, others who are in need, others that we can try and build up and show the love of Christ to. We can use our skills that we have been given in different professions to be able to practically serve with the skills God has blessed you with, to be able to use your time to then use those skills for the benefit of helping potentially your neighbour or the benefit of potentially helping the kingdom of God. And there's often an intersection of both as we seek to love our neighbour as Christ loved us. I also want you to think about the time that we give to considering our spiritual gifts. Are you clear about what spiritual gifts that you have? I often think about spiritual gifts um, with the concepts of personal training. Uh, Mitchell, my brother, is a personal trainer, so you need to exercise a muscle to help the muscle grow, so you need to use it. And as we th I think about spiritual gifts, if I have spiritual gift, if you have a spiritual gift, are you giving it the time to exercise it, the time to refine it, the time to help it grow through God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit? And after preparing the sermon, I know I personally want to talk more about to Sarah about how we save and organize for my pay to be deposited in our joint account as one way for us to be faithfully looking after what God has given to us. And as we come to a close, let me summarize what we have explored in today's parable. We are waiting for Jesus' return. You need to be ready for Jesus' return. And we need to be faithful with what God has given to us while we wait for Jesus' return. And what is it that you need to be faithful with today as you wait for Jesus' return. And with that, let me close in prayer. Lord, we know the power of your word is sharper than a double-edged sword. I pray that it would be piercing our hearts and our minds through the power of your Holy Spirit to prompt us to consider how we can use our lives to faithfully serve you with what you have given to us, Lord. You may need to help show us what you have faithfully given us for us to use it well. Please do that for anyone who's in that place today. You may need to give us strength and courage to be able to be equipped to faithfully look after what you have given to us or wisdom to discern it. We pray that you would be blessing us with those things today and we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And with that, I'll invite Jeremy. Oh, Craig. I'll invite Craig and the musicians to come up as we finish the service in song.
<laughs> Our God is an awesome God, a healing God. Wonderful. Thank you, James, for bringing us the word. Wonderful. I'm going to close in prayer, but um, we, we've got about a one, it's going to be like a one minute church meeting, haven't we? So do we need to break or do we just go straight into that? Straight into it? Straight into it. Okay, so I think Ray's going to chair that. So let me pray and uh, then I'll hand over to uh, Ray who will conduct uh, one piece of business for us. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity of being able to gather together. And we just pray, Lord, that you would help us to put into practice, to apply uh, the message that we've received today. And uh, most importantly, just to acknowledge the Holy Spirit and what you've been saying to us in that message. Uh, give us the courage to action it. And uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, church, and I'll hand over to Ray, who will conduct us in this matter of business. Good morning. Um, I'll just open in a quick word of prayer, and the meeting won't take very long. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our God. and We bring you the glory for being our God. Father, we just uh, meet together this morning um, to bring forward some names, to run for the ministry team. And Father, we just pray for the uh, guidance of your Holy Spirit in all the things that we say and all the things that we hear. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Anyone who would like an apology recorded for someone in the minutes, can they please just speak to Craig after the meeting and he'll take care of that. Our constitution states that um, to bring forward names for the ministry team, we must bring them eight weeks before the annual general meeting. And that eight weeks is today. Uh, it also states that anyone who wants their name brought forward to be a, a ministry team member needs to be conducted in an interview process. And those interviews were uh, conducted this week with uh, Hilary Fraser and uh, Jeremy and myself. And uh, we uh, bring forward those names and recommend them to be nominated. And they have been nominated. And the two nominations that we have are Craig Pring and Janelle Turner. So uh, they're the two nominations for our ministry team. There is nothing to vote for today, but for the next eight weeks, I would ask that you consider them, pray about it, if you want to speak to them about the, uh, their upcoming ministry, please do so. They'd be very happy to speak to you. If you have any concerns, uh, recommendations or anything whatsoever, please do so. And in the next few weeks, uh, ballot papers will be distributed so that everyone may have an opportunity, church members may have an opportunity to vote for these ministry team members. That's the meeting, so I'll just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for those people that have put their names forward to be ministry team members. Father, we pray for them, we ask that you guide them, and Father, we ask that you place on the hearts of all the church members who have the opportunity to vote, if uh, that is your will, that you sh should direct them to vote for these uh, two members. Father, we thank you for their commitment, and we, Father, thank you for Jesus, who is such an integral part of our lives that without Jesus life as we know it would be something that we couldn't comprehend and father I just close this meeting in prayer and thank you in Jesus name amen thank you amen wonderful thank you Ray uh, thank you Janelle and Craig for standing um, I'm sure that will be God's will for us um, Ray, so that date is March 28, is that right? So March 28 is the day when we have our, our church meeting after that service. Wonderful. Thank you for being part of today. Have a great week and um, enjoy the various ministries during the week as they start off and uh, we'll see you next Sunday as well. God bless. Have a great week.